More health headlines for you. Valley fever and pneumonia cases at Banner Urgent Care Clinics have been steadily rising in the past few years. So here's a snapshot. In 2022, there were 356 cases. The following year, in 2023, there were 454, and just last year, there were 550 cases. According to Banner Health experts, the number is likely to rise this summer with the monsoon season and dust storms after the dry winter and spring that we've had. So joining me now is Dr. John Galgiani, Director of the Valley Fever Center over at Banner University Medical Center. It is great to have you. Yeah, thank you. You know, you look at those numbers and you think, Ooh, that's a little disturbing. That's kind of jarring. Why are those numbers going up every year? Yeah, well, those numbers that you were showing are actually the cases that were diagnosed at Banner Health, uh, Banner Health uh, Urgent Cares, mm -hmm. and that's the patients that presented with pneumonias. So there could be more. Yeah, well, this is, turns out that Banner Urgent Cares are only about 3% of the entire Maricopa County. Mm. But we've shown that year, month to month, that the, the, the cases we see at the urgent cares are very similar to the ups and downs that we see across the county. So it's a, it's a good baram barometer. Yeah, so why? Well, uh, it's, it has a lot to do with the weather. Mm. And uh, we're not talking about climate warming, although that might be overall over the century a big problem. But the year-to-year -year variation between when rain falls and how much rain falls and then how dry it gets afterwards, what happens is if it rains, uh, then spores which grow in the dirt bloom and then when things dry out there's a lot more spores to get out of the dirt into right. your nose and so that's why about now is when you'd probably be having trouble um, with more cases so that's we were talking earlier you know how do you avoid that when we're talking <laughs> about you know the monsoon season coming yeah. in it kicks up you know these storms kick up the dust all yeah. the spores spread all over the place i mean it just seems almost unavoidable it is unavoidable. Unfortunately, it's unavoidable. Um, in fact, it really the the monsoons or the the haboobs really are not what causes most of the infections. It turns out the spores are really small mm -hmm. and about the same size as a, a bacteria, and um, little desert breezes. It not you don't have to have 50 or 60 mile an hour winds, so just getting in the air all the time. Uh, is the risk. And as I was saying before, um, you know, there's a risk everywhere you live mm -hmm. and the risks are just different. And knowing about the risk here in Arizona is step one, just knowing what this disease is and then going seeing your doctor and asking for a valley fever test mm -hmm. when you think you might have it. So when you say knowing, you know, what you could possibly have, there's a lot of signs and symptoms. Right. The, the most common is a cough or chest pain or discomfort like that. But fatigue is a very common symptom, mm -hmm. really a different kind of fatigue than just feeling tired. It's mm. it's you can't go to work kind of fatigue. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really yeah. common. That lasts often for weeks to months, but also rashes, a, a synonym for valley fever is desert rheumatism oh. because aches and pains all over your body is a very common symptom as well. So if you have something strike you that suddenly comes on uh, and then doesn't go away, that would be a good time to go see if they think you might have valley fever. And currently there is no vaccine. It is treatable, but there is some hopeful news on the way. Well, the good news is that most people eventually get over it on their own. Mm -hmm. It takes often weeks to months. Wow. It's not just a one With or medication. Two day thing. No, oh. even without medication. Oh, now, some people, okay. some people get very sick and get to be good friends with their doctors and have much more complicated disease, and they need a lot of treatment. Mm -hmm. But we do have a vaccine that's actually in development for dogs. Uh, hopefully, veterinarians will have it by the end of the year. Um, Anavive uh, Life Sciences is the company developing that. Mm -hmm. And they also want to take it to humans, which is what I want to have done. Right. And uh, there's actually... Uh, research money of, uh, from the NIH, which is helping us do that. Oh, that would be huge. Yeah. And you're thinking this year? For the dog vaccine, it's very possible that veterinarians will have it available by the end of the year. That is promising. All right, Dr. Galgiani, thank you so much My for all pleasure. your insight. We appreciate it. Nice to talk to you.